Good day to everyone. Welcome back to another Coffee Break program. And uh, today we are going to discuss about SLE, Systemic Lupus Erythematosus. Before we discuss the subject, if you have not subscribed to my Coffee Break program yet, please subscribe, put a thumb, hit the bell icon and put a comment to encourage me. Uh, usually I come with a new medical topic every week uh, in this program but unfortunately during last uh, few weeks I was uh, on holiday and we couldn't uh, upload any videos. Okay, SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus. This is yet another autoimmune condition which affects almost all the organs of the body and which causes bizarre symptoms. Male to female ratio is very high. Nine females to one male uh, is the male to female ratio. And uh, there are a lot of risk factors. As usual, genetic factors and environmental factors. What happens is when a particular person is genetically susceptible with the genes which can cause SLE if they get exposed to sunlight ultraviolet rays or smoking or viral or bacterial infections or certain drugs and uh, sex hormones especially uh, estrogen so when somebody has the particular gene genetic components which is susceptible and they get exposed to one of these environmental factors there is a high risk of occurring systemic lupus erythematosus the mechanism of systemic lupus erythematosus uh, we will uh, briefly discuss now i'm going to explain the immune mechanism in very simple words it's a complicated process, but I will make it as simple as possible. When somebody has the genetic factor predisposing to systemic lupus erythematosus, and when the environmental factors get connected, for an example, ultraviolet uh, light of the sun rays, the cells go into apoptosis due to oxidative stress. Apoptosis is the programmed cell death. As a result of this programmed cell death, the apoptotic uh, debris fragments are released into the uh, system and uh, those, those fragments are DNA, histones and various other particles of the debris cells. And uh, these particles are presented to the system by the antigen presenting cells and thereby uh, stimulates the T lymphocytes and by, by that it stimulates B lymphocytes to produce antibodies against this debris tissue, debris, new debris particles. For an example, anti-nuclear antibodies and etc. So these antibodies circulate in the body and uh, they get hold of these uh, particles and cause immune complexes. Genetically predisposed uh, individuals do have a problem in clearing these apoptotic debris fragments from the system and they get accumulated. As a result, you get more and more antibody formation and more and more antibody uh, complexes, antigen antibody complexes and it results in various uh, chemical reactions which causes inflammation all over the body. The mostly affected parts are the skin, kidney and uh, uh, heart, lungs, joints. So all these uh, part, all these systems are affected by these inflammatory immune complexes. Not only that, the antibodies make immune complexes with the com uh, complement system and recognize body's own tissue as foreign and they attack those tissue and causes inflammation 
as a result, uh, which is a type 3 uh, immune reaction. They can attack some cells, for an example, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, and phospholipids as well, and can cause type 2 immune reaction. But mainly the immune reaction related to SLE is type 3. What are the symptoms of uh, SLE? As we all know, uh, arthralgia, photosensitivity, rash and fever, weight loss, general malaise and uh, generally being unwell are the most uh, common features of symptoms of SLE. They are general symptoms and specific symptoms. Usually general symptoms are fever, weight loss and etc. And specific symptoms depend upon the system which is affected. For an example, if the skin is affected, you get the mala rash and you get uh, uh, discoid lupus erythematosus and uh, you get erythematous uh, skin. And if the kidneys are affected, you get uh, acute uh, uh, chronic uh, renal disease. And if the pleura is affected, you get, you get uh, pleural effusion and uh, specific symptoms depends upon the system which is affected. Diagnosis. There is a diagnosis criteria for SLE. There are 11 major ways of presentation of SLE. And if we have four or more of uh, these 11 presentation ways, we can diagnose SLE. Mala rash, discoid rash and photosensitivity. These three things are presented when the skin is involved and mucosal involvement. Usually you get the mouth ulcers and uh, you can get serositis, pleuritis, pericarditis, myocarditis or endocarditis. It can affect the joints and you can get arthritis. It can affect the brain and you can get neurological complications like uh, seizures and psychosis. It can affect kidneys and you can get renal disease. Uh, it can cause hematological involvements, especially low white cells and it can affect red blood cells and it can cause anemia. It can affect platelets and it can cause thrombocytopenia. There are specific antibodies, anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-double-stranded antibodies and anti-Smith antibodies, anti-phospholipid antibodies. Anti-nuclear antibodies are more sensitive, but anti-double-stranded antibodies and anti-Smith antibodies are more specific for SLE. Anti-phospholipid antibodies are not specific. Uh, we can get them in other conditions as well. Let's discuss about the management of SLE. If somebody is uh, diagnosed with SLE, SLE could be treated and it could be relapsed. So relapsing remitting uh, pattern could be there. And uh, to stop relapses, we can prevent exposure to triggering factors and if there is a relapse, we can use steroids or uh, immunosuppressions. This should be done by a rheumatologist. Thank you so much for listening to my coffee break program. Uh, hope that you had a clear understanding about SLE by listening to today's program. And if you think my coffee break program is helpful for you, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, put a thumb and put a comment to encourage me. Let's meet again with another program in one week time.